Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. As you can see, I have a very large class. We have 35 students in this class this year. I know you're going to be sitting for a while. Um, it's going to take approximately two hours to get through all of the living histories today. They have worked so hard for months on these speeches, the research, um, the work that they had to do to turn the uh, information that they found in biographies into a speech where they give this speech as they are the person. They feel that they're giving honor to the person that they're representing. Um, so this has taken so many revisions, so many edits, and they have done a fantastic job. I um, am just so proud of them. I couldn't be more proud. I would like to, um, are our principals here? Oh, no. I would like to present Dr. Dooley, who is our assistant principal here. Dr. Dooley. Would you like to say a little bit of something? Just walk around. Good morning. Thank you for being here. And we are so proud. Actually, I should have Ms. Torres be talking here because <laughs> we are so proud to have all of you here and of our amazing students and of Ms. Sacedo and all that she's done. If we could get a round of applause for her and her group. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. As you know, your students have worked on this project for a long time. So please give them your applause and appreciation. I'm ex really excited to see what they've done. They've worked hard, studied hard, and as Dr. Dooley said, we are super proud of them and excited for this day. Nice. Good job. Thank you. I would also like to thank Ms. Mariano, the other teacher in our classroom, for all of her hard work and dedication to these students, um, helping find um, costumes at the last minute, fixing speeches, working with students one-on-one. -on -one. She's done an incredible job, so if you could please give her a round of applause. And also, all the other hands behind the scenes, Ms. Jose, um, Mr. Lyons, Ms. Espinosa, Ms. Casales, all the people who joined together to help these students become as strong as they are today. Um, please bear with them. They're nervous, and especially seeing all your faces here, they might stumble on words, but bear with them, and they will get through it. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Thank you so much for being here, and without further ado, I would like to go ahead and introduce Mother Teresa. Hello, my name is Mother Teresa. I was founded at the Order of the Missionaries of Charity to look after abandoned babies and help the poorest of the poor. I was born August 26, 1910 in Skopje, North Macedonia. I died September 5, 1997 in Calcutta, India. I was 18 when I left my parental home in Skopje and joined the Irish Sisters of Loreto, an Irish community of nuns with missions in India. After a few months training in Dublin, I was, I was sent to India where on May 24th, 1931, I took my initial vows as a nun. I was a Roman Catholic nun who won the Nobel Peace Prize for my work among the poorest of the poor. These are some quotes to remember me by. If I ever become a saint, I will surely be one of darkness. I will continually be absent from heaven to light the light of those darkness on earth. The most terrible poverty is loneliness and a feeling of being unloved. I was proud of myself for saying those words and also proud of the people who changed afterwards. My last speech. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to be comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved, for it is by forgetting self that one finds. It is by, it is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Hello, my name is Alexandra Pressy, and this is my speech.
Before I present our next student, I would like to welcome Governor Herrera. If you could all please just give him a round of applause. We know you're very busy, Governor, and I'm so thankful that you were able to make it today. Thank you. I would like to introduce Martin Luther King, Jr. Hello, my name is Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Good morning, and thank you very kindly, my friends, as I am delighted to see, see each of you here today. As you know, we are in the beginning of time, and the Almighty said to me, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King, which era of time do you want to live in? I said, I would like to start in Egypt. I would go through all the generations. I would stop in 1863 and witness President Abraham Lincoln sign the exclamation proclamation. Then I would continue back in time. Travel to this time, the human rights revolving. Something needs to be done in a hurry to bring colored people out of the out of the years, or uh, long, ge long years. Poverty, Poverty hunt, hurt. Hurt. Oh, hurt and negligence, people from Africa and United States. And in between, I am happy that God allowed me to speak to you in Memphis today. We are all God's children, we shouldn't be to live the way we do. When slaves get together, that's the beginning of getting out of slavery. Now let us maintain unity. We're going to march again. There are 13,000 of God's children suffering and going hungry, waiting to see how this is gonna come out, even if they use dogs or water hose. We have seen freedom, or we will see freedom over our heads. And we will be singing we shall overcome. We don't need to argue. We don't need to curse. We don't. We don't need to. Or need bottles or and bricks. We are just here to say we are God's children, and we want to be treated with fairness. Now let my. Conclusion. Now in my conclusion. We have to. We have seen this through. We continue. We have to continue the march to march, and and be concerned for one another. We we either go up together or we go down together. Let us rise together with greater with greater readiness, readiness and determination. Let us move on from or in in these powerful days to make America what it ought to be. We have an opportunity to make America a better nation. I thank God for allowing me to be here today with you tonight. <coughs> when I got to Memphis, I heard of the threats of what will happen to me from our sick white brothers. I don't know what will happen to me now. We have some difficult days ahead. We have are, but that doesn't matter with me now because I have been to the mountain top and I don't mind. I would like to live a long life, but that doesn't matter with me now. I just want to thank God, God's will, and He allowing me to go up to the mountain. I looked over, I seen the promised land. I am happy tonight and I am not worried about anything. I'm not fearing man. My eyes have seen the glory of the upcoming Lord. Hello, my name is Matthew Riley. I would like to introduce Diego Maradona. Hello, my name is Diego Maradona. I was born on October 30th, 1960 in Lanus, Argentina. I was the fifth of eight children. We grew up very poor. I received the soccer ball at the age of three and quickly became devoted to the game. By age 10, many said I was a prodigy. When I was, a four, when I was 14, I was signed by a semi-pro semi football team. When I was 15, I made the professional team in 1976. My life was never the same. 
I would then go on to play on seven different football clubs from 1976 to 1997. I became very well known and for the first time in my life I was no longer poor. I had everything I could think of that also included bad choices in my life. I made bad decisions with which caused a lot of legal trouble for me. I wasted with money with substance abuse. I felt bad about myself even though I was still held on on a pedestal by my fans. I had an uh, addiction, but still managed to do very well while while playing the World Cup tournament. I was able to buy a great home for my parents to get them out of that shack we lived in the slums. I tried to help too many and had many to take advantage of me. Much of my fortune was donated, given to friends and family, squandered or stolen. I was not a wise businessman. I made a mess of my life. I had to retire in 1997 because my health was poor and my late and my weight ballooned. I knew I needed to make a change, make a life change. Finally, in 2004, I stopped substance abuse. I tried to make up the the lost years with my children and family. I continued to help make up. I continued to help people who were so poor that unless I helped, they would not have survived. It was important for me to help whoever I could because my childhood poverty has always haunted me. My very great friend, friend Pele battled for the title of best football player. It really didn't matter because we both knew we were good, but our friendship was great. We had some heated arguments, but in the end, we were the best of friends. I ended up with many health problems because of wrong life choices. I died on November 25th, 2020. Hello, my name is Carlos Shemaya, and this is my speech. I would like to present Nelson Mandela. Hello, my name is Nelson Mandela. I was born on July 18, 1918 in South Africa in Transkei. Oh, thank you. I died on December 5th, 2013. This is a speech I said before my death on June 15th, 2013. No one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin or their background or their religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. I became president of South Africa and won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, a year before I became president. I was educated at the University College of Fort Hare. In June 1961, the ANC executive considered my proposal on the case of violent tactics and agreed that those members who wished to involve themselves in my campaign would not be stopped from doing so by the ANC. I was arrested in 1962 and sentenced to five years. I got out of prison in 1967 and later became president in 1994. I was known for being the first black president of South Africa. My name is Cotto Valencia. I would like to introduce Anne Frank. Hi, my name is Anne Frank. I was born on June 12, 1924. On the 9th of April, I went to a school called the Sixth Missouri School in Amsterdam. My, did you know that Annie was just my nickname? My family was Jewish and German. My family and I were forced into hiding in 1942. 
When I was in Haydn, I wrote letters in my notepad. And that's, and so that's how my diary was established. It was a very difficult life for us. We had little to eat, had to be silent, and of course, no privacy. We f we were found by the Gestapo's, and my sister and I were taken to a concentration camp. We were f eventually taken to the most notorious camp in Auschwitz. We were starved, starved tortured, and treated worse than animals. My sister Margo and I worked hard in the camps. We strived to stay alive. We both got typhus. We both died in February 1945. I spent 761 days in hiding. Hello, my name is Layla Puncha Lewis, and this is my speech. I would like to introduce St. Francis of Assisi. My name is St. Francis of Assisi. I was born of the year of 1181 in Splatu, Italy. My father was always away on business in France, so I grew up in the best school with the best education. I spoke Italy, Latin, and French. I didn't make the best choice when I was growing up and was very spoiled. I had whatever I wanted. Wa I, and wasted time and money. I fought in the war of 12-2 of ACC. I was taken prisoners and became very ill. I got better in 1205. I had a dream that I needed to devote myself to prayer so that I would know, know God's will for me on a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. I experienced extreme poverty while helping beggars. I knew that I had fine riches at home. I went to gather as many things as I could bring to bring back the poor for the poor. I sold them and my horse as well. I was told that I was not what I needed to do. My father found out about it and was very angry. He ordered me to return home. I refused to demote my, f my f denounce my family. My new family were all gods, poor and creatures from the earth. I would serve them for, serve them the rest of my life. In my final years, I had suffered with poor health. I wasn't in much pain and blind. I died in October of 1226. I was patronized as to St. Francis of Assisi that the patron saint of animals because I love to go out to the countryside, preach and sing to the animals. Hello, my name is Elijah Benali. I would like to present Sitting Bull. How Cola, that means hello friend in Lakota. I was born in 1831 in South Dakota. I am Sitting Bull. I was a hunk papa leader. I was originally named Jumping Badger, but my father saw how careful and unhurried I was, so he na nicknamed me Slow. I killed my first bison at the age of 10. At the age of 14, my father and uncle took me on a raid to the Crow Territory. 
After the raid, my father named me Tatanka Yotanka for my bravery, which translates to Sitting Bull. I had five wives. During my time, it was customary to have more than one wife. I had six children, one whom was adopted. I was the first warrior to become chief of the entire Lakota nation. I had a dream about what was going to happen at the Battle of the Little Big Horn. I made sure all the women and children were safe, while Crazy Horse led 3,000 warriors to destroy General George Armstrong, Armstrong Cluster and his men. After the battle, I took my people and fled to Canada to avoid prosecution for four years. Due to scarcity of food and resources, I surrendered myself to the U.S. government. Years later, I joined Buffalo Bill's Cody Wild West show. I adopted Ann Oakley, who was a sharpshooter in the show. On December 15, 1890, tribal officials tried to arrest me. My warriors tried to defend me, but in the end, my son and I were fatally shot by Indian police. After my death, I went to be with my forefathers and the Great Spirit. When I left this earth, I found my peace and happiness. One of my famous quotes to remember me by is, let us put our minds together and see what life we can make for our children. Palami Aye, thought F for listening to my story. Hello, my name is Daniel Winiko. I would like to present Harriet Tubman. Hello, my name is Harriet Tubman. Today I'm going to tell you how I made his history using the Underground Railroad to flee and to rescue my people. I was born on a plantation in Dorchester, Maryland on March 6, 1820. My parents are Harriet Green and Benjamin Ross. Aramanta Ross is my real name, but they call me Minty. I changed my name later on to honor my mother, Her Harriet. I have eight siblings, but the realities of slavery eventually forced many of us apart. I have eight apart. The, the, their names were Rachel, Lena, Soph, Maria, Ben, Henry, Moses, and Ro Robert. We all have our father's last name. My mission was to save 700 slaves t in the raid of the Kambahi Ferry during the Civil War. I worked along the Union Colin, James Montgomery, and, uh, and 150 African American Union soldiers. After the Union Colin, James and I went to the Civil War as a spy and a military leader. At the Civil War, I worked with the Silver Army as a nurse to help slaves travel to the north once they came behind Union lines. I got involved in the Union Army by volunteering to help the Union gather intelligence behind Confederate enemy lines, and I was inspired. Leading the mission up to the South Carolina Kambahi River helped catch the militaries off guard. The create the this creates the opportunity for the African American soldiers to overrun plantation, seizing or destroying valuable property. Throughout the years, my repeat uh, efforts to free slaves became known through press reports and a biography, which left people to wonder how a young, tiny woman like myself lead a mission as big as freeing slaves and working as a spy. The first photo of myself was taken in 1885. I was an old lady at that time. No one ever envisioned a woman like me to be a military leader and to have a huge impact on history. A little quote of what was on my mind during this time. I had reasoned this out in my mind. There was one of two things I had a right to liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other. Harriet Tubman. Hello, my name is Jamari Levitonio, and this is my speech.
I would like to present Audie Murphy. Hi, <clears throat> Hi my name is Audie Murphy. My full name is Audie Leo Murphy. I was born on June 20, 20th, 1925 in Kingston, Texas. I left fit I left school in fifth grade to find other workers to help support my family. My skill was hunt with hunting. I dropped out of school in fifth grade and got a job picking cotton for a dollar a day. The rifle helped feed my family. I was born in a large family in Hunt, Texas. After my father abandoned us and my mother died when I was a teenager, Hunt Country, Hunt County, Hunt County authorities placed his three young siblings in Bullish children. Children's Home. I was a soldier and a songwriter. I was an American combat soldier during World War II. I received many military combat awards. I enlisted in the Army in 1942. By the end of World War II, I had earned 28 medals. In January 1945, we were leading a successful counterattack while I was one wandered out wounded. wounded and out of I mean, mission. My friend and fellow soldiers was hit. I gave him a little, a strange little smile, and s and said, "I goofed Murphy." And then he died in my arms. I had always enraged and killed all German soldiers there. I received the distinguished, distinguished several cross. Service across, I received many more medals before I left the military. I went into acting bef after the war. I became a major motion picture actor, making 44 films. I died on May 28, 1971. I died in a plane car, ac car crash. I'm, hi, my name is Uriah Chapel. I would like to introduce Pope. Hello, my name is Pope. I am the chief of Okeawenge. I was born in the year 1630 in the Pueblo Okeawenge, which is known today as San Juan Pueblo. I let the Pueblo revolt with other Pueblos against the Spanish because they forced our people to not practice our cultural traditions, to become Christians, and to listen to every command. I am a medicine man I w and was arrested because the Spanish thought it was some kind of witchcraft. When, when, when I was... When I was released from jail, I went to live in Taos Pueblo, where I began to plan the Pueblo Revolt. I wanted to go back to the old ways as Pueblo people. I began a secret negotiation with other Pueblo's leaders. They all agreed to begin the Pueblo Revolt on August 13, 1680. I sent runners to each Pueblo with a rope full of knots. Each knot would be untied, and that the last knot was untied, we would attack. We won against the Spanish and became free. After a few years, the explosion of the Spaniards had not brought peace or and prosperity to the Pueblos. When we went to the traditional religion, it came to a drought. Then the Spanish force of 300 men attempted to regain a foothold of New Mexico in 1681, but failed at doing so because of my army men. And another Spanish force tried, but failed. The Apaches and the Navajos stepped up their raids and recalled the Spaniards. 
had provided protection from the raiders. Some of the pueblos got along with the Spanish. My death occurred in about 1688. My name is Austin Riley, and this is my speech. I would like to present Marie Talchi. Hello, my name is Maria Tachi, and this is my story. I am an Osage Indian, and I live in Fairfax, Oklahoma. When me and my older sister Marjorie were little, we would dream about becoming prima ballerinas. My mother started to notice our interest in ballet, so when me and my sister Marjorie were three and four, our mother enrolled us into ballet classes. When I was about eight years old, me and my family relocated to Los Angeles, while I was in Los Angeles, I experienced the feeling of not fitting in. The students used to tease me about my name, made war whoops when they would pass me in the hallway, and they would ask me if my father took scalps. That was such a depressing time for me. It was also painful to go through because I love my history and culture. Throughout my dancing career and into retirement, I advocated for celebrating and preserving Native American history and culture. So while me and my sister Marjorie spent our lives dedicating it to dance, we would get better and better every day. We would have some tough days where we didn't want to go, but we pushed through it and did the best we could. I started to improve and get better each day. In 1937, I began ballet lessons with Madame Ninjinska. Then I got the biggest news that would change my life. In 1942, I was hired as an apprentice with the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo one of the most famous ballet companies at the time. While I was there, the company director suggested that I change my last name to Talchiva to sound less Native American and more Russian. I refused because I was proud of my name and my heritage. While I was in New York, I met a choreographer named George Polanchine, who then became my husband. Soon after, me and George Polanchine formed the Polanchine Ballet Society, now known as the New York City Ballet. George Polanchine soon taught me my signature ballet dance called the Firebird. In 1949, I performed the Firebird dance. When I performed the Firebird dance, it catapulted me to the top of the ballet world, which established me as the first Native American prima ballerina to hold the ranking name. I also received an award for Woman of the Year in 1951. I had held my title as prima ballerina for 18 years. After years of dedication to dance, I sadly retired from ballet in 1966. I then started my own little family. I had one daughter and I named her Elise. My daughter Elise is now 64 years old. She is a hardworking American poet. She also taught the MFA writing program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. She also lives in Chicago with her own little family. I lived a long and happy life, but my life came to a sudden end on April 11, 2013. In closing, I would like to recite one of Maria Talchi's famous quotes. If anything at all, perfection is not when there is nothing to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. Hello, my name is Lena Vicente, and this concludes my speech. I would like to present Jim Thorpe. My name is Jim Thorpe. I was born May 28th in 1887. I was born in Peru, Oklahoma. I am of Sac and Fox descent, uh, a Native American. After my early school years, I went to Haskell Indian College in Carlisle. And in industrial school, I played football in college and was chosen to the All-American team. It was my speed that was noticed during football games that got the attention of track and field coaches. I was recruited by the track and field coach and began to train in 1912. I won the deca de decathlon, decathlon and pentathlon by a huge margins in, Alca in the Olympic games in Stockholm. Then in 1913, the Amateur Athletic Union found that I played 
semi-pro ba baseball team in 1909, which should have disqualified me from the Olympic competition. Subsequently, I lost all my gold medals. In 1919, I played baseball for the National League. I also exceedingly excelled in other sports, including basketball, boxing, lacrosse, swimming, and hockey. Major in magazines and newspapers, I was hailed as one of the greatest athletes of all time as I got into my older years, I was unable to secure em employment because my body could not endure sports any longer. I abused alcohol and was near poverty, poverty in 1951. A movie was made of my life and I had some income. I died in March of 1953 in California of a heart attack. My body was m moved to Munchchunk, Pennsylvania, to a small town, which was the name, which what the name was changed to Jim Thorpe. My name is Jared Casserole. I would like to introduce Charles Dickens. Hello, my name is Charles Dickens. I was born on February 7, 1812. My parents were John Dickens and Elizabeth Dickens. I grew up with four brothers and three sisters in Portsmouth. I had to move to London because of financial difficulties. While I was in London, I worked in a factory where I polished shoes. I lasted one year with my job be because I quit. Since I quit my job, I, give, I began my career as a journalist in 1834. I was known for my quick and accurate courtroom reporting. Then I got engaged to a woman named Catherine in 1835. We got married in 1836. After the marriage, I wrote my first novel in the same year. Then in 1837, I had my first child with Catherine. And we named him Charles Clifford Boz Dickens. After our first child, we had nine more children seven boys and three girls. I became an avid writer. I wrote many books. For a while, I had a passion for theater and contemplated acting. Then I realized that my first love was writing. My first novel was The Paper Wicks. The next was a treasure one, Oliver Twist. There were m several more, but David Copperfield seemed to be a favorite amongst all ages. Then one of my most successful books was published, A Tale of Two Cities. I worked hard and diligently. At 58, I, die, uh, I died of a stroke on June 9, 1870. I am now remembered for my novels, short stories, plays, and nonfiction novels. Many of my novels were made into movies. Hi, my name is Jaden Riley. I would like to introduce Shirley Chisholm. Hello everyone, my name is Shirley Grissom. I was born and raised in, in Brooklyn, New York. My parents are immigrants and I was the oldest of four sisters. I attend high school and college in Brooklyn. In college, I received awards in my school as a debater. I graduated in 1946 and earned my master's degree in elementary education from Columbia University. In 1964, I served as a director of a child care center and as a educated specialist. That same year, I ran and was elected to the New York State Congress and served for years. For years, black lives were taken advantage of races in different fields of work. Survival is even more challenging if you were a female fighting this war of races and gender fairness. I am the first black woman to join the strongest po political Democratic Party and be elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1968. I was also a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the United States president. In 1972, I won 152 delegates, but withdrew from the race. My slogan was on bot and a boss, which I would also name my 1970 life story. During my 15 years, 
in the House of co-founded the, the National Political Congress of Black Women, supported the Equal Rights Amendment, and fought to legalize abortions. I retired in 1983 and moved to Florida. Sheila Grissom died on January 1, 2005. My quotes are, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring in furniture. The next time a woman of whatever color or a dark-skinned person of whatever gender strives to be president, the way should be a little smooth because I helped paint it. My name is Kate Napal. I would like to introduce Neil Armstrong. Hello everyone. My name is Neil Armstrong and I was originally born on August 5th, 1930 in Waka Puinta, Ohio. My parents were Volia and Stefan Armstrong. And I had a younger sister and a younger brother. I joined the Navy on January 26, 1949. And I fought in the Korean War. I flew the drum, German, German man, F 9F Panther, on August 29th. 1951, I saw action in the Korean War as a um, escort of a photo re recognized plane over Sanjin on September 3rd. I flew arm Bren recognizes over a primary transportation and a storage facility south of the village of Manjonin, Majorin, west in west of Wansan. I I was making a low bomb and run run at thirty five miles per hour. <coughs> when my wing was torn off by a cable set as a booby trap. As, uh, I retired from, from active duty on August 23rd, 1952. On June 4th, 1962, I applied to become an astronaut in September. I became one of the two civilians to back to be back up for Gemini five on July sixteenth, nineteen sixty nine. As soon as Apollo eleven was launched from the Kennedy Space Center, my heart was racing one hundred ten beats per minute. We landed on the moon July 12th, 1969. As soon as I stepped out of the lunar module on July 21st, 1969, I said, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. After we came into the lunar module, we realized that our suits were were broken, broke the ignorance switch, and we, ignoration switch, and we had to use parts of a pen to start the launch sequence. I re resigned from working at NASA in 1971. I died on August 25th, 2012 from complication results from com coronary bypass surgery at the age of 82 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hello, my name is Tyler Chino. I would like to present Desmond Doss. Uh. 
Hello, my name is Desim Doss. I was born on February 17th or 7th, 1919. I was born in Luxembourg, Virginia. My parents, William, worked at Embertha, worked at a shoe factory after I finished high school. I worked at a lumber yard. I used to join the army on April 1st, 1942. I thought it was an honor to serve my country. I married Dorothy Such. Four months later, I did not believe in bearing arms because of my faith, but I still wanted to serve my country. I thought bearing arms was a sin. I requested to have a medical duty. Duty. I became a, me a medic in the 307th Infantry Regiment, 77th Infantry. Division in a body fight in Okinawa, I helped many hurt her and wounded soldiers. On the first day, I was able to rescue 75 men. I made a decision not to leave them, so there I picked them up and carried them to the cliff. I was able to lower them down the cliff by rope to safety. In May, during battle, I continued to help rescue wounded men. I made four trips under fire over a few days. I was able to brave Japanese artillery fire to get to the wounded on May 12th. After attending to many wounded, a grenade explosion and seriously injured my legs. I bandaged my own legs. I wanted to continue to help others. After five hours, I was getting carried off a stretcher. My fallen soldiers found my missing Bible and brought it to me. That was my weapon. After the last battle, I received the Medal of Honor. I was promoted to corporal. I spent six more years in the military. I contract tuberculosis in the hospital I had. I had to have a lung and fibers removed in 1976. I lost my hearing. My m motto was just one more. God, let me help one more. I died on March 23rd, 2006 from respiratory failure. My name is Santiago Vitorino. I would like to present Chester Nez. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Chester Nez. I was born, I was a Navajo code talker. I was born on January 23, 1921 at Chachilta in New Mexico. I went to boarding school at Fort Defiance in Arizona. The Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. After that, the Marine Recruiter Corps came to my school looking for men for the war. So I enlisted. 28 other Navajos enlisted with me. We were called the first 29 at boot camp. The military had an idea to use the Navajo language as a code. This was a good idea because we did not have a written alphabet, so the Japanese could not find an alphabet and decode our code. We used animals as a code, like the turtle was a tank. We used birds as airplanes, sea animals, sharks as, shark as battleship, dolphin as submarines. After that, I got shipped to fight 
at Guadalcanal in 1942. I was equipped with a rifle and a radio. I had a partner with me that sent messages and I'd receive the messages from a different team of two. The Navajo and our language was the reason we won the war. I am very proud of that. After the war, I went to college in Kansas City and got my bachelor's degree. Then I was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for my service. I was honored many times and gave many speeches. I would ride in the parade every year for the inter intertribal Indian ceremony. I would enjoy all the people there. I also fought in the Korean War from 1950 to 1953. Then I died on June 4, 2014 at Albuquerque in New Mexico. Hello, my name is Thomas. I would like to introduce Rosa Parks. Hello my, hello, my name is Rosa Parks, and this is my story. I am an African American, and I am from Tuskegee, Alabama. I was born on February 4th, 1913. In 1914, my parents had separated, so my mother had to raise my brother and I on my mother's maternal grandparents' farm in Pine Level, Alabama. During the year of 1924 through 1929, I attended Montgomery Industrial School in Montgomery, Alabama. I also joined an all-black private school where I performed janitorial work in exchange for tuition. In 1932, I married Raymond Parks, a barber from Montgomery. He was older than me by a good nine years. In 1933, I completed my high school diploma and I went to work as a seamstress and, ser seamstress and served as a secretary to my local chapter in the NAACP, known as the National Association for the, colored Pe for the Advancement of Colored People. Two years later, I registered to vote after twice of being denied. By 1949, I was advisor to the local NAACP Youth Council. On December 1st, 1955, I was arrested in Montgomery, Alabama after a bus driver ordered me to give up my bus seat to a white passenger and I refused. I also I also participated in organizing a boycott of the Montgomery bus system. In January of 1956, I lost my job as an assistant tailor at the Montgomery Fair Department store. I was also arrested along with other boycott organizers for violating anti-boycott laws. In 1957, I moved to Detroit, Michigan to participate in the prayer pilgrimage for freedom. In the 1960s, I remained active in the civil rights movement. In 1963, I participated in the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. In 1965, I also participated in the Selma to Montgomery March. In the 1970s, I had a tough time because many of my family were plagued with an illness called chronic tonsillitis. In 1965, I became an administrative aide in the Detroit office <coughs> of Congressman John Conyers Jr. Between the years of 1977 and 1979, my husband, my brother, and my mother all died of cancer. In 1979, I was awarded, awarded the highest honor of the Spring Arm Medal by the NAACP. In 1996, I was also awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 1999, I received the Congressional Gold Medal, which is the highest award given by the U.S. Legislative Branch. The medal bears the legend, Mother of the Modern Day Civil Rights Movement. On October 24, 2005, I died at the age of 92 in Detroit, Michigan. 
People will always remember me by my quote saying, you must never be fearful about what is what you are doing when it is right. Thank you, my name is Devani Riley. I would like to introduce Tecumseh. Hello, my name is Tecumseh. I was born in March 1768 in a village alongside the Ohio River. I am a Shawnee Indian. My name translates to shooting star, Tecumseh the shooting star. In 1774, I was six years old. I watched my father and older brother prepare for battle with the Big Knives. The Big Knives were military men from Virginia. My father was wounded in battle and later died. After my father's death, we were forced to move west. That winter, my mother gave birth to <coughs> triplets. That the two that survived, my mother named one Lala Wetika. In 1786, with my knowledge, I entered my first battle with the big knives. I lost my nerve and ran away, failing my first test as a warrior. After that I swore never to show my fear ever again. My older brother was killed by an American soldier. My younger brother, Lala Wethika's name translates to he who makes a loud noise, was a person who was irresponsible, although later in life changed. He changed into a new person. He was struck by a seizure. At this time, he had a vision in which he was to lead his people and purify their culture. When he awoke, his people gave him a new name, Tengatawa, which translates to the open door. Later on, the town called him the prophet. In 1805, there was an outbreak called smallpox, which killed 90% of my town. I died a few years later in 1813. Hi, my name is Gail Sia, and this is my speech. I would like to present Geronimo. Hello, my name is Geronimo. I was born on June 16, 1829, and died on February 17, 1909. I am famous for being the last Native American to surrender to the U.S. military. I was captured on the date of September 4, 1886. I also spent 23 years of my life as a prisoner of war. People say I was imp important because I was a hero and symbol of Native American resistance to both the United States and Mexican military. People have also said I became a legend due to my exploits and numerous escapes from incarceration from 1858 to 1886. I am a leader in many different ways, but one was that I led 300 men, women, and children away from the U.S. government's military, as well as 3,000 Mexican soldiers who were injured. I started this war and fought for the Native Americans because I always thought that each person, no matter what race or color, should have freedom. My most famous quote was, I was no chief and never had been, but because I had been more deeply wronged than others, this honor was conferred upon me, and I resolved to prove worthy of the trust. I had two children named Chapo and Dante. I always told myself that I should have fought until I was the last name. Man, hello, my name is Koi, and that was my speech. I would like to present Anne Sullivan.
Hello, my name is Ann Sullivan. I was born on April 14, 1866. I died on October 20, 1936. Although I was called Ann or Annie from the very beginning, my real name is Jonna Mansfield Sullivan. I lived in Massachusetts. My family wasn't perfect. They were poor. My mother died because of tuberculosis. My father left my brother and I. After my father left, we were sent to Alms House, Tuxaberry, Massachusetts. Once we, d once we didn't move, my brother died a short time later. My brother d After my brother died, I spent my years alone and sad. When I was five, I contracted did trachocoma, which left me partially blind and left me without, write, without writing or reading skills. At age seven, I was, I was unschooled, hot-tempered, and nearly blind because the, of the untreated trachocoma. Soon, I got my education at the Perkins School for the Blind. As the years went by, I became a teacher to Helen Keller. In 1880, there was a subsequent inspection of Tuxaberry by Benjamin Franklin Sanborn. He was then a state inspector of charities. I implored him to allow me to be admitted to the Perkins School for the Blind. Within months, the plea was granted. In June 1886, graduating at age 20 as valedictorian of my class, I stated, Dude bids us go forth into active life. Let us go cheerfully, hopefully, and earnestly, and set ourselves to find our special part. When we find it, willingly and faithfully perform it for every success. We achieve trends to bring man closer to God and make life more as he would have it. After that day, at age 20, I arrived at Ivy Green, the Keller family, as stated. In 1887, I began working to socialize with my wild, stubborn and student and taught her by spelling words into Helen's hands. Intentionally, spelling meant nothing to Helen. I eventually taught her over 500 words or more. That was my greatest moment. Hello, my name is Tiana Anderson. I would like to introduce Oscar Schindler. Okay. Hello, my name is Oscar Schindler. I was born in Zawita, Moravia on April 28, 1908. I worked sev several trades until I joined the Abwehr and the military intelligence service of the Nazi party. In 1939, before the beginning of the German occupation of Kazakhstan, in 1938, I collected information on railways and, and troop movements for the German government. I was arrested for Espionage by Kazeka Slovakian government, but I was released under the term of the Munich um, Agreement. That year, I continued to collect information for the Nazis working, working in Poland. Before the invasion of Poland at the start of World War II in 1939, I acquired a Animal Ware Factory in Krakow, Poland, which employed about 1,700 workers. Wom. No, it's Wom. Wom. 1,000 were Jews. My Abwehr connections were helped me protect my Jewish workers from deportation and death. In the Nazi concentration camps. As time went on, I had to give Nazi officials even larger bribes and gifts of luxury items obtainable only on the black market in order to keep my workers safe. By July 1944, Germany was losing the war. The SS began closing down the easternmost concentration camps and deporting the remaining 
prisoners westward. Many were murdered. The Auschwitz and the and the Grossrosen concentration camps. I convinced the SS Hopstrom further Amen go with commandant of the nearby Krakow Plaza concentration camp to allow me to move me me my factory to Brennan's Brennick in to protectorate of Bohem Bohemia and Moravia, thus sparing my workers almost from certain death in the gas chambers. I I use names provided by the Jewish ghetto police, Mansell Goldberg Goethe's secretary, Metik Piemper, complied and typed li a list of 1,200 Jews, secretary Metik, or who traveled to Brunlitz, in October 1944, I continued to bribe SS officers to prevent my workers' executions until the end of World War II in Europe. In May 1945, I had spent my entire fortune on bribes and black market purchases on supplies in order to save m the lives of approximately 1,200 pe Jewish people to this Day. They are known as Schindler's Juice. Hello, my name is Nicholas Tilly. I'd like to present Sojourner Truth. Hello, my name is Sojourner Truth. And Hello, my name is Sojourner Troop, and I was born in 1797. My legal name is Isabella Van Wagner. My parents are James and Elizabeth Bamfrey. I changed my name to Sojourner Troop because I wanted to travel and tell the truth. I escaped from slavery and moved to New York City. I signed up black soldiers to fight for the Union North. I also met President Abraham Lincoln. I was the first woman to sue a white man in the United States court and win. In my famous speech that I gave at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in 1851, I said, now, if you want me to get out the world, you better get the women voting soon. I shan't go till I can do that. I always felt that Frederick Douglass thought that equal rights for black men were more important than black women's rights. Olive Gilbert helped me to write a book about my life because I never learned to read or write. In 1863, I said, children who made your skin white, was it not God? Who made me black, was it not the same God? Am I to blame therefore because my skin is black? Does not God love colored children as well as white children? And did not the same savior die to save the one as well as the other? And I died of old age on November 26, 1883, in the Battle of Creek, Michigan. Hello, my name's Autumn Sky Gregory. I'd like to present Louis Pasteur. My name is Louis Pasteur. I was born on December 27, 1822 in Douai, France. When I was young, I was a average student, but I was a gifted artist. I was from a poor family, so painting was what I mostly did as a teen. I was introduced to science, then my life changed. I went to college and earned, my de earned many degrees. I became a chemist and examined chemical, optical, and crystallographic properties of a group of compounds known as tartrates. I resolved the problem concerning the nature of tartaric acid. I became a professor at the university. I met my wife there at the university. We had five children and three of them died. That is what drove me to investigate infection disease. I did major studies on bacteria and found that they didn't spontaneously appear. I was a nicknamed the father of germ theory. I discovered fermentation and pasteurization, which was named after me.
I was a world famous chemist and microbiologist. I was a French microbiologist and pathologist and chemist. I was well known to the global scientific community. I lived from 1822 to 1895 and she made many discoveries to gain the title one of the greatest scientists in history. Was also the dean and a professor of the facility of science in Lille in 1854. Some great discoveries I had were the mysteries of scientists our chicken pox and silkworm disease, and help with the first few vaccines. I died on September 28, 1895. Hi, my name is Deshaun Haskey. I would like to present Marie Curry. My name is Mary Curie, and I was born on November 7, 1867, in Warsaw, Poland. I am a physicist, chemist, and a scientist. I am well known for my discovery of radioactivity and polonium. Some people might also find me familiar because of my huge contribution to treatments for cancer in 1901. The year I discovered radium was in 1902, a year later. The reason for my discovery was because I extracted pure radium salts from pitchblende, which is a highly radioactive ore obtained from mines in Bohemia. How I found polonium was, the, was basically the same way I found radium. I obtained polonium from a pitchblende, a material that contains uranium, after noticing that it was an unrefined pitchblende and was more radioactive than the uranium that was separated from it. In 1903, I discovered my, or I received my doctorate from the University of Paris. Perry and I also got rewarded the Nobel Prize in f for physics in 1903. Three years later, my husband got killed in a road accident in 1906. A couple years later, I got presented with one gram of radium by the U.S. president in 1921. A couple years later, I passed in 1934, July 4th, at the age 66. The cause for my death was because of my condition of plastic anemia. My condition was developed because of exposure to radiation through my work. The quote I am remembered for and was my most famous quote was, life is not easy for any of us, but what of that? We must have persuasions and all above all confidence in ourselves. We must believe that we are gifted for something and that this, this thing must be attained. That was my last quote. But my most famous favorite quote was, one never notices that has, what has been done. One can only see what remains to be done. Hello, my name is Laura Shashino. I'd like to present Anne Eleanor Roosevelt. Hello, my name is Eleanor Roosevelt, but my full name is Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. I go by my middle name. I was born October 11, 1884 in New York City. My parents and my brother died before I was 10. My other brother and I were raised by relatives, but before they died, my siblings and I lived in a wealthy family that was attached to great community service. When my father died, my mom became very depressed, so she got together with someone named Richie. He was an abusive alcoholic. We were very poor, and my siblings and I lived in poverty. All of us kids had to share one bedroom. We couldn't even afford a telephone. A little later, Richie kicked me out of the house for more than a year. He ate better meals than us and spent many nights out drinking. He was often physical and abusive, shouting at my mother until she cried. I was insecure and starved for affection. I also considered myself an ugly duckling. When when my mom passed away, I started to get into writing, and soon I became a prolific writer with many articles and books. When I was older than 20, I served as the first chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights. 
I also played an instrumental role in drafting the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I was an American political figure. Later in my life, I developed deafness in my right ear. When I became famous, I was known as the first woman of the United States because I was married to Franklin D. Roosevelt. He was the president for four terms. We had six children who were mostly raised by nannies. I had a very busy life writing and giving speeches. This busy life took its toll as I began to have many alignments. I died of a stroke on November 7, 1962. This is my famous quote. Remember always that you have not the only right to be an individual. You have the obligation to be one. You cannot make any useful contribu contribution in life unless you do this. Hello, my name is Amara Scott, and this is my speech. I'd like to present Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have dedica dedicated a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggle here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Hi, my name is Orion Giddy. I'd like to present Kateri Tekawitha. Okay. Hello, my name is Kateri Takawita. I was born in 1656 in New York. I died on April 17, 1680. Here's the story of my life. I was born in 1656 in the Mohawk village of Osirian. My father, I don't know, was the Mohawk chief. I was orphaned in 1660. At the age of four, when a smallpox epidemic wiped out most of my village, killing my parents and my younger brother. I'm the only one who survived the smallpox outbreak, but my eyesight was badly impaired. In 1660, the French launched a punitive expedition against the Mohawks and destroyed our village. My people then chose to move across the Mohawk River to... I forgot. In a toss. As I grew older, I became more and more interested in my mother's religion. French Jisu missionaries, black robes as the Mohawks called them, traveled among the villages of Iroquois. 
confederacy teaching my people about Christ. Eventually, I asked one of these priests to teach me and baptize me into the faith. My interest in Christianity annoyed my uncle, but it was my refusal to marry that scandalized my relatives the most. When I refused the marriage proposal of a young warrior to his face in front of his family, it was the last straw. My relatives mocked me, calling me names, and giving me all the hardest work. Not long after this, I left the village in a daring escape, traveling with the help of two heron warriors, nearly 200 miles to a village of Christian Mohawks. When I died, I was 24 of an illness. Four years later, my last words were, Jesus, Mary, I love you. F Fifteen minutes after my death, my face transformed no longer scarred but radiant an hour assigned to all who knew and loved me that i finally found a true home in heaven hello my name is emily sayutza i'd like to introduce black hawk Hello, my name is Black Hawk. I was born in 1797. I died on, I died on October 3rd, 1838. I was a sock and fox leader and warrior who lived in what is now the mid Midwestern United States. Although I inherited an important and historic sacred bundle from my father, I earned his sta status as a war chief, but his action leading raiding of war parties uh, as war earned his status. A young man during a war of 1812, I fought on the side of the British against the U.S. in the hope of pushing white American settlers away of Sauk territory. Later, Later, I led a band against the white settlers in Illinois, a present day Wisconsin. Wisconsin, during the 1832 Black Hawk War. After the war, I was captured by U.S. forces and taken to the eastern U.S., where other war leaders were taken of the several Cities after the after an extended, extended period. period of mourning, mourning for my father, I resumed resumed leading leading parties over the next year, usually targeting the traditionally enemy. The Osage I did not belong to a clan. To that provided. that provided the sock with hereditary, hereditary silver leaders of chiefs, I achieved, achieved status. status. That my explosions of as a, as a warrior and by leader success, waiting parties. Men like me are sometimes called war chiefs. But historian Patrick Jung writes is more accurate. accurate to call them more dif different from the different that of a civil chief 21st country 21st century, 21st century historian. historian such as John W. Hell. Uh, success, suggested. Su 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 suggested the term were captured from this war basically 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 the entire proposal propose of war as the fight for our land many battles ensued and we're we were forced off our land and moved west. Many of our native people were revenge 
shot and killed our lake stock was stolen eventually british leaders felt that it was wrong to remove a sock and fox they allowed us to remain a provided us with guns and and a mission to fight in case anyone else tried to force us our land. Native American people were abused, murdered, and humiliated. But to this day, we stand strong and proud. Hello, my name is Kelo Garcia. I would like to present Clara Barton. Hello, my name is Clara Bright. I was born on December 25th, 1821. My real name isn't Clara, it is Clarissa, but most people call me Clara. My full name is Cl Clarissa Harlow Barton. I was born in North Oxford, Massachusetts. I had siblings and their names were Dorothea Barton and David Barton. My parents are Sarah Barton and Stephen Barton. I was an American nurse who founded the American Red Cross. I founded the American Red Cross in 1881 at the age of 59. I led it for the next 23 years. I was basically a hospital nurse in the American Civil War. Nursing education was not very formalized then. I did not attend nursing school, but I taught myself about nursing care. My small staff and I received over 63,000 requests for help. We were able to locate 22,000 men. People called me the angel of the battlefield because I bravely provided nursing care and supplies to soldiers. I was nursing the wounded soldiers of both sides, although I was afraid of public speaking. Here's a quote I said. I may sometimes be willing to teach for nothing, but if paid at all, I shall never do a man's work for less than a man's pay. I died on April 12, 1912. Hello, my name is Kaylee Tiller. I'd like to present St. Francis Xavier. Hello, my name was my name is Saint Francis Xavier. I was a Spanish novice Catholic missionary and saint who was a co-founder of the Society of Jesus. My full name is Francisco de Jesu y Apotia. I had nicknames which were Apotia of Japan and Apotia of Indians. My my parents were Donna Myra de Apotia. Yeah, honest and who won day Jaso. My dad died when I was nine years old. I was born on April seventh, fifteen oh six in Javary, Spain. I later died on December third, fifteen fifty two in Xingchong Island. I died at the age of forty six. I was laid to rest at Benskila of Boom of Jesus, Alia, India. I was one of the most prolific missionaries of Roman Catholic history. A Roman Catholic missionary is one who is sent on a mission charged to work in a territory or forgiving country. Missionaries go into a community to teach about Jesus Christ and the Christian faith. I was instrumental in the establishment of Christianity in India, mainly Archipelago and Japan. Modern scholars I estimated I baptized around 30,000 people. I drove away demons and worked nine miracles. I healed the sick and cast out devils. I sailed from his homeland of Spain to take Christianity to the people of India, Japan, and the neighboring islands. It is symbolized by a boat and cross, and the symbol of Christianity. I'm the patriot, patriot saint of the environment and animals, because I loved all creatures and allegedly preached to even birds. My right forearm is the arm which I baptized and blessed many thousands of people, and tend to and held the sick and dying. My love and respect for people of different cultures, 
continues to inspire us today. There are many of my schools, but the top three rated ones are St. Francis Xavier Elementary School in Phoenix, Arizona, a St. Francis Xavier Catholic School in Cairns, Utah, and a St. Francis Catholic Church School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My school prayer is Living Father. We ask you to protect the students facility and staff at Xavier High School. Guide us to salvation by following the example of Jesus Christ, your son. Inspire us with your grace to seek both academic access and spiritual wisdom as we use your gifts and talents in service to others. Hello, my name is Johnny Antonio. I would like to present Wilma Mankiller. Hi, my name is Wilma Mankilla. I was born on November 18, 1945 in Taliqua, Oklahoma. I have two children. Their names are Felicia Leah, Gina Leah. They are 59 years old and 57 years old. I went to Skylight College. I had a lot of jobs like tribal leader, writer, activist, software developer, social worker. I was a Native American activist, social worker, community developer, and the first woman elected to serve as principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. I was honored and recognized. I died April 6, 2010 in Ader, in Ader County. Oklahoma. I spent my remarkable life fighting for the rights of American Indians. I was the sixth of 11 children born to Shirley Mankiller and Clara Irene Sidden. I recalled that I never felt poor growing up. My family's rural, rural ancestral at home had no electricity, indoor plumbing, or telephone. When I was 11, my family moved to San Francisco, California. I was a constant builder working with the federal government to polite self-government agreement. I was the principal guardian of centuries of Cherokee tradition. My funeral was attended by women's rights activists. My legacy will be continued to encourage all and who modify all who carry my work. Hi, my name is Savannah Carrillo. I would like to present Sacagawea. Hello, my name is Saka Julia. I was born among the Shoshone Indians of Idaho. I was born in 1788 near the Continental Divide at what is now known as the Idaho-Montana border. I was captured and sold by the Hadatsi Indians in the 1800s when I was 12. I was sold to a French-Canadian tr French trader named Toussaint Charbonneau around 1804 and became his wife. According to the Hadatsis, my name meant bird woman, but to the Shoshones, my true tribe, it meant boat launcher. In 1804 to 1806, I, along with my husband, were part of the Lewis and Clark expedition to the Pacific Northwest. I became their interpreter to help get horses to cross mountains with the Shoshones. While on the journey, I also searched for edible plants and made moccasins and clothing. On February 1st, 1805, I gave birth to a son and named him Jean Baptiste. I also had a daughter and named her Lisette. At the end of 1812 at Fort Manuel near present-day Morbidge, South Dakota, I passed away. However, my death is controversial. Oral historians and some biographers say I went to live among the Comanches, started another family, rejoined the Shoshones, and died on Wyoming Wind River Reservation on April 9, 1884. I died of the disease typhus. I have been honored by having a river, a peak, a mountain passing Dr. me, and a goat deliquin. Hello, my name is Chase Herrera, and this is my speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present John F. Kennedy. Okay. 
Hello, my name is John F. Kennedy. I was born on May 29, 1917 in Brooklyn, Massachusetts. I graduated from Harvard in 1940. I served in the U.S. Naval Reserve from 1941 to 1942 or 45. In 1952, I was elected to the U.S. Senate representing Massachusetts. I served until I was elected president in 1960. I was the 35th president of the United States from 1961 to 1963. During my presidency, I was known for my efforts to promote civil rights. On January 20, 1961, I made my famous inaugural speech with my vision for a new generation of Americans and my commitment to spe uh, promoting freedom, democracy, and peace around the world. In this speech, I famously said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. On September 12, 1962, at Rice University in Houston, Texas, I gave another one of my famous speeches where I outlined my vision for space exploration and my commitment to putting a man on the moon. Before the end of the 1960s, I made the famous declaration that the United States would choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. On November 22nd, 1963, as my wife and I were in Dallas, the most tragic of days in history occurred. We were, in motor, we were in a motorcade just passing through downtown Dallas when shots rang out. Bullets struck me and I was pronounced dead shortly after I arrived at the hospital. Later, communist Lee Harvey Oswald was, was arrested for my murder. Two days after Lee Harvey Oswald was accused, Jack Ruby killed Lee Harvey Oswald. Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in as the new president of the United States 98 minutes after I was pronounced dead. My bloodstained wife stood at his left hand. Hello, my name is Corey Woodmore. Dear guests, I would like to thank you for your endurance through this long presentation. Um, I know that uh, there were many students, and as they were presenting these speeches and preparing them, I was trying to have them keep them shorter, but um, if you know any teacher, teachers aren't gonna tell their students to not write so much. So with that, I allowed them the opportunity to create what they did create. They chose their own person, they did the research, and it was really, really difficult for them to turn those biographies into speeches as they performed them on their own. Um, I am just so proud of what they've done. Most adults could not do what they did here today. And I'm just so proud. I'd like them all to please stand. And I'd like you guys to take a bow. Everybody take a bow. Thank you for your time here today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And um, just tell a few people about the amazement of these students here today. Thank you so much.